Malachi! Malachi! <laughs> we'll go to bed now, little girl. Hi, Cizrin here with another Gauntlet video, and uh, this is going to be like a generic tips and tricks for the Gauntlet, and we'll explain like everything what the Gauntlet is, etc., more in detail. And I do have like a separate video for specifically Act 1 and 2. That is by far the hardest part of the Gauntlet. Um, and then um, we are going to do build videos as well for like what are the best builds. So if we look here, this is the coast and it's like this in like the very first area as well, the Twilight Strand. We have 40% monster life, 20% monster damage, 20 monster movement speed, attack speed and cast speed. Monsters fire two additional projectiles and then we have the monsters deal 30 fire, cold and lightning as well as the minus 20 res. This is a very common thing to die to. You can actually get absolutely one shot by the cannibals. Normally the gauntlet is slightly harder because we have minus 40 all resistances. But uh, for, for this one, we have minus 20, so it is slightly easier on the coast. But early on, you really, really want to off screen. And again, watch the Act 1 and 2 video for really how to get started in the gauntlet. And a big part of it is over leveling by a very, very large margin. When you're playing in the gauntlet, the biggest thing you need to do is a huge mental reset. And that is because it's no longer really Path of Exile. You're playing the gauntlet now. Uh, especially if you're a softcore player and you don't even normally play hardcore, but maybe you want to check out this event, right? A lot of people are doing it and uh, we very often see a lot of softcore players have a lot of fun. But there is also a lot of people that end up like, okay, Ziz, I died nine times in Mudfuss, I'm going to stop. And the reason for that is very often that they're still playing Path of Exile. You need to have like a mental reset. Think of it more as like, well, you're starting in maps. It's instantly hard. Everything matters. Uh, and that's a very big difference to normal software because I'm sure a lot of you are just going through the campaign as a chore that you just have to get through. Whereas now the campaign is a huge, huge part of it that you just, you have to deal with. So you very, very quickly need to get resist cap. One of the most important tricks I can give you for the gauntlet is at level 12, you can craft resist on a white item. It doesn't have to be blue with an open suffix or rare with an open suffix. So generally, in the start, it's very popular to have two sapphire rings, maybe with cold or, you know, some other res crafted on it. But at least, you know, for example, for Act 1, you have one to have 75 cold res and fairly decent lightning and fire. And once you get to that point of being res capped, and I'd say you're probably fully res capped uh, by mid Act 2, um, and you really want to use the league mechanic as well to, to do this, you're going to get a large, large amount of transmutes from Tuyin. So a really good trip. Uh, trick there for farming early is obviously Southern Forest and farming a lot of currency. You can get Rug, Tuyan, and Gwenin. So that's a very, very big trick and you are going to need to craft a lot of stuff. Also check, they might just have some really good items. Like this ring was virtually like this when I got it from the vendor. So there will be really, really good things just straight up for sale. Um, so it's worth checking on rerolls. Make sure you are rest capped in mid act 2. Normally what I would do there is very, very quickly help Alira. So I would like do Chamber of Sins, then Creighton, then Oak, and then help Alira. And uh, then with, with the help of like Benchcrafts on, on white items, I generally don't really have many rare or blue items. Uh, I'd say I have no blue and sometimes rares if they have like, if they give me two suffixes, like two resist, then I'll use it. I will use a lot of white items early. Also gambling with Gwenin early on for either trying to get, I wouldn't say Tabula is that big um, because it's so much mana cost and there, I'm sure there are some builds that really benefit from it. But for me, I really, really wanted a thousand ribbons because that is a large amount of damage early on. Also gives you a four link because of the elemental prolif and you also get um, a decent amount of defense. But other than that, um, Wanderlust, very, very big early on because everything can freeze you. Uh, everything in the gauntlet is going to do elemental damage, even if it's just physical. So if that crits you, it can ignite, shock, or freeze you. And that's very scary. I definitely recommend Wanderlust, making sure your character pretty much always has the ability to cannot be frozen or that you're going to be very quick to log out. Flasks and stuff like that is very important. You really want to make sure you have bleed immunity. Again, you can get freeze immunity from your flasks as well, but getting instant flasks is very big. I would never recommend panicked in an event like this because it's very easy to get one shot from 60% to zero. Um, so you always want to have either bubbling or seething, maybe playing with two life loss and making sure that you can always react very quickly to the, the high incoming damage. So flasks are going to be huge for this. Also, 
something that's very important is you really want to over level a large amount like as much as eight levels even 10 levels over is not a bad idea um and there are some leveling stones in each act that are going to be really really good that you can um that you can use to like really get ahead so let's go through all the like really good leveling stones so early in act one submerged really really good you want to over level a large amount there and then ship graveyard is like pretty okay before Mervale uh and easy to reset prisoner's gate has too many goats now to be safe act two southern forest amazing place to keep farming the ling mechanic um and then for xp wetlands is pretty good and then northern when you get there but that is after weaver weaver is very scary i do show in the other video how to kill weaver basically smoke mine act three city of sarn and docks depending on like where you feel like you need to over level the most um so city of sarn at start very good for leveling and the docks is really really good you could level to like 38 even probably 40 here uh without too much difficulty and again obviously it will start slowing down it's just you need to start thinking about this more like maps and you might be very used to getting an insane amount of xp during the campaign but just grinding it out and taking 10 to 15 hours sometimes even 20 to get to maps is a lot better than dying repeatedly and wasting more time so don't be afraid to like just treat it differently comb stronghold is the best place in act four but you can also level in dry lake if it's uh, if you're struggling before getting to comb stronghold I usually do lab when I get to crystal veins. I'm very comfortable in lab, especially with a two-handed mace, but the wind slash and stuff is so fast in this, so you need to be very careful. Once you get to Act 5, um, the, the first area, like the Ascent and uh, Slave Pens can be kind of scary, especially the Ascent. But uh, once you are able to get to Chamber of Incense, this is the this is like the main leveling area during the campaign. Like you can level here for a very long time. A lot of people in the gauntlet go all the way to like 55, 56, and even like focusing less on experience, but just really gearing up here. When you get to Chamber of Innocence, a really, really big focus for you should be getting gear. You want to have every piece of gear having like 50 to 70 life. It's surprisingly doable. Um, and just staying here a long time, using the league mechanic, trying to craft some gear. And the number one thing is to make sure you're a rest cap before you're doing Katava. You never ever in the gauntlet want to like kill Katava and be like, oh my god, I'm not rest cap because there, there you have way less farming opportunities after. We see people leaving Chamber of Instance with like 2 to 2.5k life, which is an insane amount. Normally, I'm happy killing Katava with 1.2k life on hardcore, but going for as much as 2 to 2.5k is very, very good for this. Especially if you're a caster build, the really big advantage you get here as well is you're getting so much damage. Um, you might be getting three or four more gem levels than you normally would have by just running straight to Katava, and that'll end up basically giving you 50% more damage, which is a large amount, and Katava will then go down very quickly. And Katava Act 5 is one of the biggest obstacles in the game. The reason for that is that Act 5 Katava is so much harder than Act 10 Katava. Act 10 Katava doesn't really have a slam per se. It has like the the red like call in the the slam bubble um but that is fairly easy you see where it starts and then you just move out of the way whereas the act 5 katama on top of everything else has the like slam that can very easily one shot you so you really want to stay in the fight for as less amount of possible time like you just want to burst burst katama down um so really really focus on over leveling here in act six um it does start getting fairly hard here you really want to make sure you're rest capped uh, Ridge is another good leveling area if you want to continue over leveling a little bit and just taking it slow and moving forward is a really really good thing to do. Um, Southern Forest ends up being another really good leveling area and if you are feeling kind of weak and low damage then waiting with Abarath and the other skill point here is actually a really good idea. Um, coming back once you're maybe like oh I'm now in act 8 then you can go back and kill these because you're going to be super over leveled and you just stomp them. And for Act 6, for the Brian King Reef boss, gotta remember that for the uh, if you're uncomfortable dodging the stage, you can portal out, portal back in, and actually put a new portal up, all while still inside, like the safety bubble thing. Um, so you can completely skip that stage of like running around and dodging. Act 7, uh, one of the scariest things is probably Grust. Uh, and then you kind of want to avoid the Dread Thicket boss until you're, again, very overleveled. Maybe until you're like level 62 to 65 somewhere. Um, and... Uh, Arakali is very very scary it's similar to the weaver where there's well there's chaos damage here and Arakali can also do like the aoe overlap so be really really scared and try to burst her down and decoy totem 
which honestly I should have mentioned earlier, but Decoy Totem is absolutely huge in the gauntlet. Decoy Totem is such, such a big thing. If you're not a class that gets Decoy Totem, I normally make a Ranger just to get Decoy Totem for my other characters. Act 8, pretty straightforward early. Todri is like very, very scary, but by over leveling, you do normally burst her down incredibly quick. Um, whenever the, the fight is like prolonged, that's when you really, really struggle. You want to keep clicking the pump all the time so she's never like building up stacks on you. There's like a wheel there you can click. Um, but yeah, honestly, the best way to deal with Dodor is to just kill her fast. That's why overleveling is so huge. Um, and Toxic Conduits and Sarn Ramparts are both pretty okay for XP. Once you get past that, we have the Harbor Bridge. And this is a great place to level. Honestly, probably better than Blood Aqueduct. Blood Aqueduct and the Gauntlet is absolutely terrifying. Um, and yeah, getting a Tabitha is really, really good. But with Flasks being weaker than before now, having a Granite and a Jade doesn't make you immortal in Blood Aqueduct. It in fact is very, very likely that you can get killed. If you're getting an Aura Rare, like allies have sub fizz, very quickly to get bursted down. Um, it's just because the Tornado Shot Archers and the Revenants can just very quickly burst. So a lot of people will probably skip farming a Tabitha early instead of opting for doing like trying to gamble a Tabitha from Gwenin and then farming experience points in Harbor Bridge. And farming here all the way to like 68, 70 is not a bad idea. Once you are at 68, 70, you could continue in Blood Aqueduct. You're most likely going to be pretty powerful at this point, hopefully having around 4k life already. And you really want to focus on gear early in the gauntlet. Don't wait until maps to start making your gear. Um, but if you are getting like 68 to 70 by the time you're here, then doing all the other stuff. I normally wait with Yugle still and do that like right before maps, but uh, doing Solaris and Lunaris should be no issues here. Blood Aqueduct, very scary. Same with Oasis, you can wait a little bit with this until you're like maybe 70, 72. Um, and then go through here and the, the one of the main things you really want to be leveled for the most is Belly of the Beast. The uh, Amalgam boss of like the three, um, the three prime evils uh, is incredibly strong uh, the red ball lob can very quickly shoot you and one shot you so you really want to have high damage decoy totem and make sure you don't backtrack into your decoy totem that killed me in one gauntlet once you get to act 10 um, absolutely at all costs do not think about doing Valenta during the campaign we've seen really really like even like good players uh, have to leave the fight or straight up get one shot by Valenta um, very often I've done Valenta at 80 to 82. I think one gauntlet I left it as late as like 85. And I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. It is absolutely fucked. You really want to make sure you are phasing that boss. You never want the boss to do anything other than like the one move that it pretty much always gets to do, which is like throwing the balls out, which is three now, and then pulling them back in. And there's so much burst damage there. You really, really want to be super aware of the fight and just absolutely stay away incredibly dangerous ravage square pretty decent nothing super dangerous there and you can go to desecrated chambers farming here is really really good getting like 75 76 7 um here is completely acceptable and is extra good this thing because it drops the divination card for corrupted uh corrupting blood jewels so honestly farming here before maps very good Kitava Act 10, honestly, I find Kitava Act 10 incredibly easy. Um, the biggest thing people die to is panicking and standing in the fire and dying, which isn't really that much more dangerous than normal. So there's not really much here that should kill you. If you're over leveled and 72, 74, you can go all the way to 76, like I said. Um, Kitava should be absolutely a breeze. And now we get to maps. And once you're there, don't alk your maps, especially early. It can take like people... 85 to 90 until they start allocating their maps um, and very very large amounts of people will be running blue maps for a large time um, once you start getting like really good defenses online um, people will start like you know you, you'll kind of feel it when you start feeling safe um, and that is also incidentally when you die if you're always scared in the gauntlet you have a pretty good chance of staying alive and you can level to 90 in white maps you can like maybe do one conqueror so you have some yellow maps but Going to 90 in fives or, or sevens, etc., is completely reasonable. So just take your time, get to level 90, and win that PC. So I hope you guys enjoy this general tips and tricks video. Again, we'll try to make some build specific stuff as well. And you can always ask stuff. There's loads of people in the racing Discord that will be happy to answer questions. I will answer questions on stream. 
So hope you guys are excited for the gauntlet. Thanks so much for participating. Thanks for everybody donating to the prize pool. Remember, Shopify doubles all donations up to 25k. And yeah, merch on shop.zizzerin.com. Thank you guys so much for the support. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.